Mu is the symbol of immovability, both of mind and body. Not to move means not to stop with an object that is seen. It passes on and the mind is not arrested when the mind stops. When the mind stops with each object, as the mind is presented, the mind is disturbed with all kinds of thought and feeling. The stopping inevitably leads to the moving that is disturbance. Though the mind is thus subject to stoppings, it in itself remains unmoved. However, superficially it may seem so. When the mind moves from one object to another without being stopped, one enemy to the next, one hit to the next, if the mind is unable to move on into this fashion, sure to move in this game. Avoli Keteshvara has 1000 arms. If his mind stops with the use of a bow, all other 90, 999 arms will be stopped also. When I look at a tree and notice one of the leaves is red, I stop and take notice of this leaf. When this happens, I fail to notice all the other innumerable leaves. If instead I look at this tree without any preconceived ideas, I shall see all the leaves. One leaf stops me from noticing all the rest. Beginner instinctively parries it. Then as soon as the training starts, he, think, he thinks about where to hold the sword, how to hold and move the sword. Mind stops. Later, his way of carrying the sword advances towards no minus. In musical states, one starts with the lowest pitch and gradually ascends to the highest. When the highest is reached, one finds it next to the lowest. In a similar way, when the highest stage is reached in the study of Buddhism, one turns into a kind of simpleton who knows nothing of Buddhism, nothing of Buddha, and is devoid of all learning or scholarly traditions. The scarecrow in imitation of the human figure is erected in the rice paddies. It holds a bow and arrow as if ready to shoot, and seeing this the birds and animals are frightened away. This human figure is not endowed with a mind, but it scares away the deer. The perfect man who has attained the highest stage of training may be likened to it. All is left to the unconscious or reflective states. The principle of spirituality must be grasped. This goes without saying, but at the same time one must be trained in the art of swordplay. In the case of a swordsman, he must free himself from all ideas of life and death, right and wrong, good and bad, gain and loss, giving himself up to a power which lives in his deep inner being. While living, be a dead man, be thoroughly dead, behave as you like and all is well. The art of swordsmanship ultimately consists in not having one's mind stopped. In Zen Buddhism, one asks what is a Buddha and the master raises a fist. What is the ultimate signification of Buddhist teaching? And the master replies even before the questioner finishes, a spray of plum blossom or a cypress tree in the courtyard. Not necessarily the appropriateness of the answer, but to see the mind not stopping, stop neither with the color nor with the odor. Zen is concerned with the movement of instantaneity. Buddhas and beings are, are not two, nor are gods and men. Gods or the Buddha is a name given to such a mind identified with prana. The way of Confucius or the Tao or Sufi is all the one mind, when they just follow the letters and have no understanding of what the one mind is, they abuse it in every possible way throughout their life. They are day and night involved in doing good things or evil things according to their karma. They would abandon the family and ruin the whole nation or do anything contrary to the dictates of the one mind. They are all confused and altogether fail to see what the one mind looks like. 